So in example 5, uh, we are asked to find the shear capacity of the box girder beam as shown below. Uh, this is the figure of the box girder beam and we have to find the shear capacity by com first computing the shear capacity of the concrete section alone and then uh, finding out the contribution from the stirrups and adding them together we can find the ultimate shear capacity of the section and then find the design shear capacity. Now, first we are we have to find the contribution from the concrete section alone without the shear reinforcement without considering the shear reinforcement. Then, um, in the second part, we have to find the total shear capacity of the section considering the shear reinforcement as well. This beam has four leg N12 stirrups in the beam with the spacing of 190 millimeter. As you can see here, they have four stirrups here, uh, four leg stirrups here. This is one, um, two three and four so it is a four leg stirrup so one two three and four so there are four leg stirrups and the stirrups di uh, diameter are in 12 bars so four leg and 12 stirrups or they are also called as fitments so there are the stirrups in this beam and uh, the Longitudinal tensile reinforcement consists of 8 in 36 bar. So these are 8 in 36 bar. These are the longitudinal reinforcements. Um, and then we have to find the design shear capacity. We have concrete strength as 32 megapascal. So now first let's find the shear capacity of this concrete section alone. And then we proceed to find the contribution for the steel stirrups. So we know that the shear capacity from the concrete section alone is given by the empirical formula KV. And this is given from the class AS3600. Here we can use the simplified method. Um, all the criteria given for the simplified methods are satisfied. FC dash is less than 65 megapascal. Uh, the tensile yield strength of the steel is uh, 500 megapascal, and we can use this criteria. So finding KV. To find KV using a simplified method, first we have to find um, ASV mean, that is minimum shear reinforcement. is given as 0 0.08 and this is given in so here This is 32 megapascal. BV is the width of the wave. That means in this figure, as you can see, it has two waves. This is the wave, and this is the wave as well. So it has two waves here. So we have to add, so BV is 250 plus 250. That means it is 500 millimeters. So the width of the wave, BV for this case is 250 plus 250. It has a two waves in this beam. And yield strength of the stirrups is also 500 megapascal. And the spacing between the stirrups, the longitudinal direction is given as 190 millimeter. So that means we, we will get the ASV man as. So this is a minimum shear reinforcement required for this given box girder beam. So what is the ASP provided then? ASP that we are we provided in this figure for this beam is four legs in 12 stirrups. 
so we have provided four legs and 12 stirrups in this beam so the area of that is four into and this comes the cross section area of the stirrups comes to as 452.3 millimeter square and we have seen here that ASV divided by S is greater than ASV dot mean divided by S therefore this implies that KV is 0 0.15 now that's coming from AS 3600 plus 8.2.4.3 so now again as you said uh, using the simplified method where ASP divided by S is greater than ASP minimum divided by S, we can take KV as 0 0.15. Now the second thing is we need to find what is your DV. And DV is given as greater of zero point seven two d or 0 0.9 D as discussed in the lecture video so the overall depth of the beam is 0 0.72 divided by 1100 that is the overall depth of the beam or 0 0.9 multiplied by the effective depth is 1030 now looking into the looking at the figure again so this is your overall depth is given as 850 plus 250 so your overall depth is 850 plus 250 that comes as 1100 100 millimeter and the small d or effective depth is given here from the top to the center of the reinforcement is 1030 millimeter so we are using this parameters in the equation for finding dv so again looking here so it is overall depth is 1100 and the small d that is effective depth is 1030 so bigger of that is your dv therefore dv comes as from here shared effective shear depth comes as 927 millimeter now with that we can find out what is the shear capacity contribution from the concrete that is therefore v you see the contribution of shear capacity from the concrete section alone is kv bv dv and fc dash now in here kb we have found out at 0 0.15 again bv is there are two waves so it is each one of them is 250 millimeter and dv we have just found out as 927 32 megapascal and that will give us in newton and in kilonewton it this comes out as 393.29 so this is the shear capacity contributed by the concrete section alone now the second part is to find the shear capacity contribution from the stirrups so let's find out that one the second part is to find the shear strain contribution from the stirrups So V U is the shear strain contribution from the stirrups for um, vertical stirrups, and it, this equation is given as ASV This is for the this is for the vertical steer for vertical stirrups where alpha v equals to 90 degree now this is given in clause and in here for the simplified method For the simplified method, theta v can be taken as 36 degree. Now that's coming again from clause. So 
so now plugging in the values asv is we have computed it is the area of the stirrups for four leg stirrups which we calculate as 452.3 the first body is 500 dv we have computed as 927 and the distance between the stirrups in longitudinal direction is 190 millimeter and cot theta v where theta is v is 36 degree comes as 1.38 now this gives us the shear capacity contribution from the steel as 1522.6 kN. Now this is the contribution from the steel. So therefore, the total shear capacity, therefore the total shear capacity of the section VU is the summation of VUC plus VUS contribution from the concrete plus contribution from the steel and the contribution from the concrete is 393.29 kN plus VUS which is computed as 1522.6 kN. So now this gives us the total capacity of the section as 1916 kN. And the strength reduction factor phi for a shear is taken as 0 0.75 here it is from table 2.2.2 for shear phi is taken as 0 0.75 therefore therefore the design capacity is phi vu where phi is 0 0.75 which comes out as 1437 kilonewton so this way we can find out the design shear capacity of the given section by adding the contribution from the concrete as well as from the steel stirrups